Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create an Aurora wallpaper effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions that I've got to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting Control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. Let's name this Aurora Wallpaper because that's what we're making and we're going to do a width of 3840 pixels, height of 2160 pixels, resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, background contents don't matter, Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels. Let's hit Create and we're now ready to begin. Now before I start on the actual uh, creation of the Aurora wallpaper. Let me say that I'm doing this at this particular size, even though it's going to be wallpaper, because it's easier to shrink wallpaper down without losing any resolution than it is to take something smaller, say 1024 by 768, and blow it up to fill something that's 1440 or 2160. So with that out of the way, let's change our foreground and background colors to light gray and dark gray respectively. So let's click on our foreground color and let's change this to uh, C9, 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 a nice light gray. Hit OK and then let's click on our background color and we'll change this to a dark gray of 1C, 1C, 1C. OK and there's our dark gray. So now we've got our light gray and our dark gray uh, colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter, we're going to go to render, and we're going to go to clouds because we're going to render some clouds on this, some random clouds. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to blur those clouds. Okay, so we're going to go to filter, we're going to go to uh, blur, and we're going to go to Gaussian blur. We're going to make that 165 pixels to make it super duper blurry. We're going to hit OK and we now have a very blurry background. Next, what we need to do is put a gradient effect on this, but we can't because this is a locked background. You can see down here, I cannot get to my layer styles. So what we need to do is unlock it, then we can rename it if we so desire into background. I happen to like to keep things neat, so I'm going to name it as background. You don't have to though. Uh, and then, now that we have our background, we can then go down here to our layer styles and we can select our gradient overlay. Now the gradient overlay is going to be a blend mode of overlay. Dither is going to be unchecked. Opacity is 100%. The gradient that we're looking for is this violet to orange gradient, which is part of our default gradients. If you don't see it, you can just go here to the sprocket and go to reset gradients, then hit OK, and you will then see it here as the number 5 gradient to choose. All right, make sure reverse is checked, align with layer is checked, style is going to be radial, angle is going to be zero, scale is going to be 150 percent. And as you can see, we now have this nice gradient that looks like a bright orange in the middle and purpley violet on the outside. But we don't want it to be orange and purple, we want it to be a solid single color with variations within it. So we're going to do that by creating a hue saturation adjustment layer above our background layer. So we go down here to our adjustment layers, we're going to hit hue saturation and we're going to change our hue to 180. Our saturation here is going to be at negative 60 and our uh, lightness here is going to be at negative 20. Okay, and that really does make it kind of bluish and teal and it uh, mutes it down. Now, if you don't happen to like this uh, color, you can change the color by going up here to the hue and choosing any color of the rainbow. I happen to like this color and that's what I'm going to use for this tutorial. But feel free to change it to match whatever it is that you want it to look like. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we want to give this a vignette. So we're going to do that by using a curves adjustment layer because then you can adjust the amount of vignette anytime that you so desire. So we're going to go down here to our adjustment layers. We're going to put in a curves adjustment layer and then we're going to grab this upper right hand box down here and we're going to bring it down to this bottom black line. Once we have that, we're going to make sure that we are on our mask for Curves 1. It will automatically change our properties to the mask button, which is uh, up here. See masks. And then we can choose our feather here, and we're going to make that 175 pixels. 
okay? That's really all that we need to do in our properties. Now, if you don't see properties, you can go up here to Windows, you can go down to Properties, and then Properties will show up. Okay, now that we've got our curves there ready, next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, go over here to our uh, Elliptical Marquee Tool, and you can get there by hitting M on the keyboard, or by clicking on it and then choosing Elliptical Marquee Tool. Now, if you, uh, if you hit M on the keyboard and you see that it is a rectangular marquee, all you have to do is hit Shift M and it will switch to the Elliptical Marquee. Okay, easy, quick keyboard shortcut. Okay, then what we need to do is just draw a nice big marquee like so. Okay, it doesn't matter exactly how big it is, uh, just try and make it roughly this size. Then you're going to click and drag in the center until it gets to the center of your image and you should see the guide show up to show you that it is in the exact center. If you happen to not see the guide show up, maybe you don't have it set up in your preferences to show guides, then just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, once it is in the center, all we have to do is fill this with black. You can see that it is all white. We want to fill that with black and the way that we do that is we hit control backspace. Okay, control backspace fills it with black. You can see now over here on the layers palette it is filled with black. And because that mask layer of, of the curves is feathered by 175 pixels, you can see that it has a nice feather. It is not a straight hard edge, which is perfect. Then what we want to do is deselect. So hit control D to deselect. And we now have a nice vignette, but it's far too dark. We don't want it to be this dark, so we're going to click on our curves adjustment layer, we're going to go down to opacity and we're going to change our opac opacity down to 20%. And that gives us just a nice faint vignette around the outside of our background. We are now done with the actual background upon which our Aurora lines will sit. Now the Aurora lines can be done in many, many different ways. I've seen them done by people using the pen tool and drawing. I've seen people do it by using the uh, airbrush tool or, or, the, uh, or, or the paint tool, uh, brush tool to brush a line and then they erase half of it uh, in order to make the line hard edge on one side and a soft fade on the other. But I have to like uh, creating my uh, Aurora effect using the elliptical uh, shape tools and inner shadows. And that uh, I feel gives me the most versatility in what I might want to do with it after I have created them. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Uh, let's change our foreground and background color back to their default. Now, I'm on curves right now, so uh, if I'm on the mask, you'll see that it is already black and white. But if I'm just on the curves layer, you can see that we're back to our gray and our dark gray. And that's fine. You just want to make sure that you can see the gray and dark gray so that you can then hit D on the keyboard to change it to the default. And then you want to hit X on the keyboard in order to swap it so that white is your foreground and black is your background. Okay? That's all that you really need to do. Uh, just make sure that you're not on the mask because if you do it on the mask, it doesn't really change anything. And then when you draw something, it's going to uh, be drawn in the gray instead of black and white. All right, so now we've chosen black and white, and we now need to get, uh, we need first to zoom out. That's what we need to do. We need to zoom out so that we can see a large expanse of area around our image. So uh, I happen to have the zoom feature uh, hooked up to my mouse wheel so I can zoom in and out quickly while I'm working. Uh, you can also go down here to the lower left hand side and just type in something like 15% uh, or 20% and hit enter and that will uh, give you the look, uh, the uh, zoom ratio that you want. Or you can click here on the zoom, on the um, uh, uh, spyglass here for zooming and then you can hit alt on the keyboard and zoom out like so or zoom in like so okay any way that you want to do it is fine uh, just make sure that you can see roughly this much somewhere around 15 10 to 15 percent zoom out seems to work best for this next step okay once you've done that you want to make sure that you select your elliptical shape tool now you can get there by hitting U on the keyboard or shift U will cycle between them until you see the elliptical marquee uh, elliptical shape tool Okay, once you see the elliptical shape tool, make sure that it says shape, fill, no stroke, 
uh, width and height, you want them to be, uh, you don't need to use those, so make sure that they're at zero. Nothing else should be there, align edges, doesn't make a difference. So here we go, we're just gonna draw a very large ellipse, like so. Almost a straight line, but definitely has a small curve to it. That's all that we need, okay? And as you can see, it is filled it with white, our foreground color but we don't want it to be filled. So we're gonna go over here to our ellipse one on our layers palette and we're gonna to go to fill, we're gonna turn off fill. We're gonna just bring that all the way down to zero. Uh, and you can see this now outlined, but nothing there. We can now zoom back in so that we can get a better view of the effect that we're gonna put onto this ellipse that we can't see anymore, okay? And all we're gonna do is we're gonna use that inner shadow layer style, like I said, which gives you much finer control over your auroras, okay? So here we go, we're gonna go down here to our uh, layer styles, we're gonna go to our inner shadow, and the inner shadow that we want is gonna be a blend mode of overlay. The color that we're gonna start with is white, but we can change that color later, like I said. Uh, the angle that we want is negative 45 degrees, use global light is off, we never use it. Distance of 50, choke of zero, size of 100, contour is linear, which is the default, anti-alias is unchecked, and noise is zero. Now, you can always add noise, like so, Let's say you like a, a little bit of noise in, in your Aurora effect. There you go. Now you've got noise. Uh, let's say you think that this isn't big enough. You can just make it bigger. Okay. Uh, there's lots of different ways to control this. Like I said, this is why I uh, prefer this method over any other method for making these Aurora uh, effects because the inner uh, shadow gives you this type of control. You can control the angle. You can make the angle uh, different so that you get slightly different effects. Uh, I happen to like negative 45 for this, but use any one that you want. The opacity, you can change that. You can change the color to anything that you want. Like I said, this gives you much finer control than, than any other method that I have found. Okay, so here we go. We've got everything that we need. Our effect is done, and we now have our Aurora. Let me hit Control H on the keyboard to hide the, uh, the outline of our ellipse. See if I hit Control H again, our outline here is back. And if I hit Control H, it hides it. That's what H, Control H does, it hides that. Okay, so here we are. We are now seeing our ellipse. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna make two more ellipses. Uh, I'm just gonna duplicate this ellipse layer and then I'm gonna move them slightly so that you can see the effect grow. Okay, so we're gonna duplicate this by hitting Control J on the keyboard and you can see we now have a duplicate. We can then hit Control T on the keyboard and we can just move this slightly like so. Uh, eh, let's make it even bigger. Uh, and if you zoom out, you know, you can also, uh, by using keyboard shortcuts like control to grab a corner, you can change the way that it moves or you can hit control shift to bring in uh, a corner exactly where you want it or, uh, you know, there, there's tons of different ways to do this Any, and there is no wrong way to do it. You can, you, you can rotate it, just transform it however it is that you like. Hit enter when you are done and then zoom in. All right, uh, let's go back to my move tool so I can move this around a little bit. I happen to like that. And then, uh, like I said, I can go in here to my inner shadow and I wanna change its color. I want this to be more of a, uh, a bluish color here. All right, and I'm gonna bring this up here just like so. There we go. Now I've got kind of a bluish color going on there. I'm gonna hit OK. And then I'm gonna go back to my original layer, uh, ellipse layer here, and I'm gonna hit Control J again to get a second, uh, a third one here. And then I'm gonna zoom all the way out here and I'm gonna hit Control T. And I'm gonna show you another powerful thing that you can do with this. Because it's an ellipse, and an ellipse is a vector-based, uh, 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 because a shape is a vector-based shape in Photoshop, I can also warp this and I won't lose any quality. So in the transform uh, options up here, I can go to this warp tool, click on that, it turns into this grid, and now I can grab any point of this grid and I can change the way that this ellipse works. I can turn it into more of an S curve, like this. I'm not doing such a great job right now, but here, let's, let's do this. Let's bring that way down, let's bring this way up, and bring this down like this. Oh, I, I like this better, let's do that. So 
you can see you can grab just about any point of this and you can really play around with it. Okay, so there. Now I've got that. I'm not going to play around too much and then I can just hit the check mark when I am happy and I can zoom back in and see that. Now, I'm going to change this color one more time. Let's change this to a nice, ooh, I don't know. Let's go with a, kind of a reddish color here and we'll go up here like that. Hit OK, hit OK. And now I've got three lines here. Now I can move any of these any way that I so wish. Control T, I can still rotate it like this. You know, there, there's anything that I want to do, I can do with this. Just like that. There. That looks good. Now what I want to do is I want to rotate all three of these. So I'm going to select all three like that. Uh, and now I can hit Control T and I can turn them all like this. Just like that. There we go. Enter. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some text. Now you can use any font that you want. I happen to uh, like this Breeze Personal uh, for this particular effect. I'm going to use this at, oh, let's go over here to my character. Uh, let's use this at 170 points, 170, uh, 165, none of this other stuff here matters, just 170 points. Uh, the color that we want to use is going to be black, so make sure that it is black. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to write our text pixel magic just like that uh, everything looks okay now you can fix the kerning in here if you want uh, which normally I say you should do this font actually happens to be pretty good so I'm not gonna mess with it but if you need to you change your font uh, spacing by putting the cursor in between the letters you need to fix hitting alt and using your arrow keys to move things closer and further apart like so. Okay, hit check mark when you are ready and there is our text. Now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, give this uh, a layer style. Okay, so we're going to go down here to our layer styles. We're going to go to blending options first and we're going to bring our fill opacity all the way down to only 15%. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, four inner shadows. Alright, what we need to do here is we need to change our overlay uh, our uh, inner shadow, we need to change this to linear dodge add. Okay, the color here that we need is going to be 6-6. Um, six, six. Where are you? 6-6-FF. Six, six, um, oh, 6-6-CC-FF. Six, six, C, C, F, F. Oof, that was difficult. Hit OK. Opacity here is going to be 100%. Our uh, angle is going to be negative 45. Use global light is unchecked as always. Uh, we are going to make this one, uh, zero, and zero. Uh, contour is going to be linear, anti-alias is off, noise is zero. Now, like I said, we need four inner shadows. So we're going to click on this little plus here three times so that we have four inner shadows. So the top one is the one that we just did. The next one underneath that, we're going to change that one too. That is going to be a blend mode of color dodge. Okay, the color that we're using is going to be pure white. That's all Fs. Opacity here is only going to be 65%. Okay, our angle is still going to be uh, negative 45. Our distance, however, is now going to be a 6. Uh, choke is going to be 0 and our size is going to be 10. Contour is still linear, anti-alias is still unchecked, and noise is 0. Inner shadow number 3 here is going to be uh, overlay. So let's make this uh, overlay. And we're going to make this color here all black. So that's all zeros. Opacity here is going to be uh, 25%. So let's change that to 25. Our angle here is going to be 135 degrees. Use global light, of course, is unchecked. Distance 1, choke 0, size 0, contour, anti-alias, noise, all the same. Inner shadow number 4, the very bottom one, is going to be an overlay. Where are you? Overlay. Uh, the color that we're using here is, once again, all black. Uh, the angle is going to be at 135. Okay. Uh, and the opacity here is only going to be 25. Uh, use global light, of course, is unchecked. Distance here is going to be 10, 0, and 5. And then we're going to do a contour and anti-alias and noise all stay the same. We're then going to hit OK. And as you can see, we now have a finished 
looking Aurora effect wallpaper. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, I am Geekman, signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.